The NBA free agency news is uh, drying up a little bit as everyone waits on Brooklyn to finally um, pull the trigger on a Kevin Durant trade. There were a couple stories that came out. Uh, Bruce Brown leaving the Nets and joining the Denver Nuggets was a move I really liked. My guy Darius Garland got his maximum contract from the Cleveland Cavaliers, locking in that young core for the next few years, which I think is is a great move. That team is going to be so much fun to watch. Uh, they haven't done anything yet with um, restricted free agent and sex land backcourt mate Colin Sexton, who I'm really surprised nothing has happened with him yet because even though he's coming off a meniscus injury, he's still only like 25 years old and was at the time of his injury playing some of the best basketball of his career. So I'm surprised the team isn't willing to like take a flyer and bring him in. I don't know if maybe they're just playing the uh, the field to try to get an, uh, a deal to come back to Cleveland or what's going on with that. Um, but I would like to see him, you know, land in a good situation soon because I don't think by any means is is he going to be, you know, failing to perform at any point coming off of this injury. I have no doubt he'll get back to the level he was playing at before he got hurt. Um, but those have really been it. Um, a couple reports have come out saying that the Toronto Raptors are the team that's looming in a KD trade with a deal that's based around um, Scotty Barnes and a lot of picks. Probably also would have to include like Gary Trent Jr., Chris Boucher, uh, except I don't think you can include him because he just re-signed with the team. So looking at that, it kind of seems unlikely that that's going to be the case because Toronto... Like, do you really think Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, and Kevin Durant are enough to get you out of the East? I mean, maybe, but you have to be really sure if you're trading someone like Scotty Barnes, who's only 20, 21 years old, for a few years of 33-year-old Kevin Durant. Like, you have to be sure that this is the move that pushes you over the top. And it's crazy to sit here and be like, I wouldn't trade for Durant if that was the package. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do it. Like, it feels crazy to say, because it is Kevin Durant. But it just seems, you know, like a team that pulls the trigger for him is going to have to be one of those teams that knows they're right there on the cusp. And even if you flip it and trade Pascal Siakam instead of Scotty Barnes, along with whoever else would have to be involved in the trade, I still don't think that's enough of a core to guarantee a trip to the finals. And that's what it's all about. So Sean Strani went on the Pat McAfee show this morning and said that Brooklyn's preparing as if they're going to have both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on the roster for this upcoming season. That's how they're handling it. They're waiting for like the good offer, the the godfather offer, can't refuse, comes in. And it's probably going to be a while on that because Rudy Gobert just got like six firsts for the Jazz and five players. So the haul for Kevin Durant might be an entire basketball team's worth of players and picks. Who knows, really? So Brooklyn's not in a rush, even if, you know, they end up starting the season with KD away from the team or Kyrie away from the team. It's not like it would be the first time Kyrie was away from the team. But the, all this all this means is the lack of news in the free agency world and the trade department. All of this means that we can focus on the greatest pastime in the NBA fandom, which is overreacting to Summer League games. Now, the actual Summer League, the official Summer League, has not started yet. It tips off this Friday in Las Vegas. It is like the greatest event ever. If you've never gone to a summer league, I cannot recommend it highly enough. But in just the California Classic this weekend, and now the Salt Lake City Classic, we've had some pretty big performances. Uh, Scotty Pippen Jr. looks like he might be the greatest uh, undrafted free agent ever signed uh, so far for the Lakers. And... Tonight, we got to see the greatest player of all time, Chet Holmgren, have the greatest debut of all time. Nah, I'm, I can't even fake hyperbole on this one. Chet Holmgren came out tonight and looked like an absolute monster. It, never mind the whole Thin Towers with Poku and all of that. He looked unstoppable. His first nine minutes in the game, he had like 13 points, two blocks, a steal, three threes, and a dunk. And it looked like he was going to just dominate every minute of that game. Then it looked like he was out forever because he stepped on uh, someone's foot on the Jazz. 
and rolled his ankle. Uh, they were really quick on the broadcast to be like, yeah, everybody, he says he's okay, but we'll see what they do if they put him back in. And it was like, damn, this sucks. Josh Giddy looked awesome, and then he hurt his ankle last year, and that was kind of like it. It was a lot of like stop and start appearances for him. So it looked like history was repeating itself, but it was not. Chet Holmgren comes back in, ends up playing 24 minutes, 7 of 9 from the field, 4 of 6 from the 3, got to the free throw line 5 times, finished with 23 points, 6 blocks, which is a Salt Lake City Summer League record, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, and a steal. The man was everywhere, and a lot of people are putting out the Kevin Durant comparisons because he was the Thunder's second overall pick, and he's very thin. Um... <laughs> But honestly, I saw a lot of Dirk Nowitzki in some of his moves tonight, especially that one-legged turnaround fadeaway jumper that he was hitting like right inside the arc. That's pure Dirk Nowitzki. It was beautiful to watch. Uh, even Poku played with a lot of energy. Like there was like a behind the back pass that he had, like saving a ball from going out of bounds. Like the the Thunder were just playing with so much energy. The the game against the Jazz was never really a game. He ended up winning by like 20 points, but everyone looked good. Josh Giddy looked great, looked every bit like the star he seemed to be last year in his rookie year. Uh, 23 minutes for him tonight, 11 assists, 14 points, two blocks, two steals, and getting that type of production from him on the defensive end, paired with guys like Lou Dort, Shea Gilgis Alexander, this Thunder team is going to be wild to watch this year. Uh, not to mention also both Jalen Williams, uh, one had a better debut than the other, uh, one finished with 17 points, five rebounds, and was eight of 11 from the field. We'll talk about him, um, for tonight, but who knows? I mean, I don't know. Is there a way to, to differentiate the two Jalens or just, they're going to just be a package deal, but Jalen with a Y and Jalen with an L. We'll just do that for now. Jalen with an L finishes with the 17 points and five rebounds. And this Thunder team, just everyone looked like they cared. And that's usually a trait in these summer league games that you'll see is like guys are really trying because, you know, not only are these like the high draft picks and the rookies, these are also a lot of veteran players trying to come in and like really like carve out a spot for themselves, whether it's in the G League or on an NBA team. This is the showcase. This is it. So you'll see guys that are out here giving it their absolute all. And it's a good barometer for, you know, just seeing how people are going to fit in. But you can't get too over overexcited about results you see here because the competition level just isn't the same. Yes, a lot of these guys are going into the NBA. Yes, a lot of these guys have already been in the NBA. But still, Summer League is basically built for overreactions to help you feel better about your team going into the next season. Do I think Scottie Pippen Jr. is going to be the greatest player on the Lakers roster next year? Probably not. Am I going to watch every summer league game demanding he get signed to a max extension when the season starts? Absolutely. Don't even need to see him on an NBA court because that's the beauty of it. So, like, what comes to mind is, like, Trey Young had a terrible, miserable summer league. He shot poorly he was just high volume poor percentages looked terrible and everyone was like oh my god the Atlanta Hawks traded Luka Doncic for this what the hell is like that franchise is done and now look at them they've already been to the Eastern Conference Finals once Trey Young's a multiple time all-star already one of the stars the bright young stars in the league and summary league meant nothing so you got to take it all with a grain of salt I remember the year that I went was the year that the Lakers drafted Alonzo Ball and everyone was so excited to see him. We had to sit there and wait all day through every game and I watched guys like Larry Markinen and Dennis Smith Jr. absolutely dominate their games and I, I mean obviously something has gotten lost in the translation and then the Lakers game that was the the summer league that Brandon Ingram Looked like he was going to absolutely dominate everyone. Uh, he had about a, a half of superior summer league basketball before rolling his ankle. 
and then team president Magic Johnson shut that down real quick. Like, from the bleachers, we could see him motioning to the team, like, you put him in, you're all fired if you put him in again. So, Summer League, it's a lot of precautionary moves, it's a lot of playing it safe, but it's a good chance to just get that first impression of these players. So, it starts this weekend, it'll run for the next two weeks, enjoy it. I'm not by any means saying don't enjoy it. I'm just saying if you see headlines in the morning that say Chet Holmgren is the greatest player of all time, or... Are the Magic going to regret taking Paulo Bantero over Chet Holmgren? Don't get lost in that. Don't worry about that yet. This isn't the time to worry about who made the good decisions, who made the bad decisions. This is all just a time to enjoy what your team has and be optimistic for the future. So let me know in the comments who you're excited to see uh, this upcoming Summer League. If you have plans to go, if you've gone before. Uh, what you think about it all, please, any and all of it, I'd love to hear it. Let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the games, and I guess let's let's hope and let's hope the Brooklyn Nets make a move here soon. We need we need some spice.